welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. It is your girl Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs with signs up cycles and there's always tons of laughter and um, hopefully you enjoy the commentary because I'm a hot mess. So if that's something you're into then let's go ahead and keep watching. Okay you guys so this is going to be our first uh, inspired piece. This is a harvest centerpiece. It was for $79.99. I was like, no way, Jose, I am going to make this for a lot less. So we are going to start with free wood. You guys know I love my free wood. I stock Facebook marketplace on the daily for it. Um, I jacked Megan from Clue Guns and Roses because I wanted to show y'all. I literally go on Facebook marketplace, either search free wood or I search it so much it just pops up and you can see right here free wood palettes i scroll up a little bit more free wood palettes and i am so lucky because i live in kansas so like barn wood is pretty accessible to me these i found on the side of the road for free so we're going to go ahead and build our box what i did was the bottom piece i took that and that's how i based my measurements off of and then i measured i'm going to call them my end caps uh, my end caps first and then my side panels second. So this is gonna be super easy peasy, just like that spindle box we made. And I'm gonna prop the end caps. At first I'm like, how am I gonna do this? Do I wanna build the frame first, attach it all to the bottom first? I'm always a hot mess and then I end up doing it the same way I always do it. So I take these end caps and you could see I have them sideways. And then I take my side piece, I'm gonna staple three, top, bottom, middle on each side here. You guys, invest in a nail gun. Um, mine is battery operated nail gun. And then we're just gonna go, we're gonna attach the second side. Now, if I were to be selling this in my booth, I would definitely have applied some wood glue on these pieces and then nailed it. But since it's for my personal use, I was, totally fine with nails if you don't have a nail gun you can just use an old school hammer and nails and it works okay so now i'm trying to fit the bottom in here and i'm like no way like i measured this i know it's supposed to fit i'm like starting to freak out here and then i just go rogue and i'm like all right i'm grabbing my <laughs> my wire cutters and i'm just going to start like hammering the crap out of this so i start like banging on the side on the top and finally like it pops in you guys like perfection fits snug as a bug in a rug like seriously and then i just get all like nail happy and these nails do not show these nails are so so tiny even if they did show i wouldn't care because it would look more rustic but um i'm just gonna go ahead and put all of the nails in here and then you guys, our box, our centerpiece, it, it's done. And this was all for free. So after I'm doing uh, the nails, now I'm gonna decorate this. Now I've never owned one of these. I've never decorated one of these. So I had no idea what I was doing, but I just went for it. So I that is a candle holder from Dollar Tree. Now I'm taking these LED candles that I found at Savers. I think they were like $1.99 each go me. And I am going to start filling this up with some florals. So I am taking some lambs here from Walmart, $2 for two picks. We are going to use the um, blue leaves from Dollar Tree. And then the blue leaves that like came with the pumpkin and like the little berries in it. Now, these velvet pumpkins I got from Dollar Tree last year. I don't know if they have this color this year because I haven't been able to find the velvet pumpkins in my Dollar Trees. So I am, what I like about this and why I've been so into wreaths lately is because it's so fun that you can change this all around and add or take away or, you know, do whatever it is you want to them. And that's also why I do not add any floral foam. I don't want to glue anything down. I want to be able to change this out by season. So as I'm filling this all in, I'm just playing around with placement here. I do cut all the leaves off of like the main bundle. That way I can place them here and there. Then I realized, what am I going to do with these two like large holes? I can't just fill them with flowers. So then I get these, my lace pumpkins. I'll leave the video for these pumpkins down in the description box for you. So I add these and they were seriously like the most perfect touch. 
then I run out of the blue leaves, but I have holes everywhere. So I grab these eucalyptus pieces. These are from Walmart. These are actually new to Walmart and they're only a dollar, but they definitely look like a dollar. And I just cut little pieces off of these and then just stick them wherever I see holes or I could like see down to the bottom of the base. And y'all, like this came out so much better than I would have ever thought. I am going, I, now I'm going to base my whole kitchen dining room in this blue color and it's gorgeous. And I love this rustic barn wood. I love that I can change this out by season and it's going to be probably a permanent piece on my kitchen table that I can change up with the season. So let me know what you guys think about this Kirkland's inspired piece and if you will be trying to create one of your own. All right, y'all, that was the first DIY today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the rest of them. I wanted to take a time out and I wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you that watch my channel, watch my content, watch me on my other channels. I truly do appreciate your support because if it wasn't for you watching, pressing a like, subscribing, sharing my content with your friends and your family, I wouldn't be able to do this as a career. So I feel super blessed and fortunate that I get to also do this from my home, which is even better, especially with the crazy world we're living in right now. So I just wanted to take the time and say thank you so very much to each and every one of you that support myself and my family. We truly appreciate it more than you will ever know. And with that said, you guys know, if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. And if you're feeling like super like, ooh, I love you, then share too. That also helps your girl out. All right, you guys, with that said, let's go ahead and just get back into these DIYs. Okay, so I found this sign, the organic pumpkin sign um, on Pinterest. So I know it's a Kirkland's item. I just didn't have the time to go look for it on their website. So I got this metal sign at Savers for $3.99. I spray painted it black. And now you guys are probably like, where am I supposed to find a sign like that? Well, I will tell you, I find these like raised metal signs at Savers all the time. So go to your thrift store, garage sales, things like that. You could even use split wood beads on like a Dollar Tree sign to achieve a look like this as well. So I am going to, one, I, I spray painted this black, then cleared it with clear matte spray paint. That way, when I apply this white chalk paint, I don't smear my black and then it looks all gray and gross. So I am using Rust-Oleum Linen White. I actually end up having to give this three coats. I don't know what was going on with this paint, but three coats did the job. Now I'm taking my baby wipe and we are wet distressing. So with wet distressing, I'm taking the baby wipe and as you can see, I'm rubbing it in and then after like at my initial rub, I go back over it with a clean part of the baby wipe to wipe off, I guess the smeared white paint. Like you'll see right down here, see how it was like a chalky white and then I double swiped it and now you could see that bright black on it. You could also do this with a wet towel as well. I just like the baby wipes. I think it works well for me, but um, uh, what do you call it? Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> so I'm gonna go over here and wet distressing is so fun because you truly have full control over how much you wanna distress, where you're gonna distress. And I love that aspect about this. And too, when you're going on metal and stuff, I don't know why, but like sanding, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't come out too well for me. So I continue to do this all the way around. This is dried by the way, and it comes off super well. I believe chalk paint is water-based. I mean, you guys will tell me if I'm wrong in the comments anyways. So, uh, sorry you guys, I'm doing this on my computer and somebody is text messaging me. Okay, so now that we're done with that, I cleared that with the clear mat. I designed this on my Cricut. This will be available 
in my description box for anybody that owns a Cricut. Please be respectful. Do not claim this design as your own as I do work very hard making them. Um, I did try to make it uh, look very much like our inspired piece. So I am taking, this is permanent vinyl. I don't know what possessed me. I think you all know if you watch my channel, I always make stencils and paint my images on. I don't know. I think it was, you know, it's back to school and I, 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 maybe I was in a rush. I have no idea why I chose to use vinyl, but I did. So this is permanent black vinyl. I'm using vinyl ease. All of this you can find in my Amazon store link down in the description box, even my paints and stuff, everything I use, you can find in the Amazon store link. Okay. So now I'm just measuring this, trying to make sure it's straight, but then I start over analyzing. Uh, that's why I applied the painter's tape was to try and make sure that like this was straight and not crooked, but good girl started measuring and we know how that goes. It doesn't go very well. Cause then I'll spend like an hour measuring every part of it, but I got it on. Now we're just going to rub that on. It looks really, really good. I love, it looks just like super chic and clean and I'm digging it. I think this one is going to go in my booth for sale because I'm not really going with the stark whites for fall in my own house. So I will be placing this in my booth. And I mean, you guys, for $3.99, some paint and some vinyl, we were able to make this Kirkland's inspired piece. And I absolutely love it. I would assume that other piece was probably like $60 at Kirkland's. Okay, this one is definitely going to be like an inspired piece, okay? So this one was only $19.99, which is actually a really good price. Again, I need to start getting like the measurements when I do these Kirkland's inspired pieces. But y'all, you remember these? Yes, they were all big and hot for a while. Well, I have, a, I have quite a few. So I was like, we are gonna make little mini versions of these. So I had the brown ones. I thought perfect. So they kind of look like wood. Now I kept those, the circles, the welcome to our home on there because I was like, this is such a great base to apply all the flowers to. So I took, um, I don't know, like two, yeah, two of these Dollar Tree picks. And then I think a couple extra uh, leaves and I broke them all down. And then I'm gonna start kind of just playing around with like the placement of these. So I obviously wanna cover up all that white. You could even paint that black too if you really wanna get, you know, neat with it. But I'm gonna take some of the leaves. I'm gonna place these down. Now you guys, what's great about these is you can do this for any home decor. Like it doesn't have to be Christmas or fall or anything, but I mean, you can decorate them seasonally, but you can also just decorate these for everyday home decor with the florals of your choice. So I thought that was really cool about this DIY. So now I'm dressing it up with um, the sunflower. I believe they still, I, I think these are this year's picks. Let me know down in the comments. I can't remember, I buy too much Dollar Tree stuff. Okay, so we're gonna play around with it. I try to make both of them look similar, but the placements just a little bit different. So then right here, I'm, I was convinced I was gonna use the little pine cones, but they just were not fitting like I wanted to. So I found some random pumpkins in my stash that I found, I don't know, they probably came from other picks, not sure. And I end up placing that in there and I was like, ooh, that worked out gorgeous. Now, I will say these have hangers on the back already, but I think, I, I think it was Holly from Hot Humble Pie who says she takes the Dollar Tree plungers and cuts, you know, smaller pieces off of them and then glues them to the back of things so that you can stand them up. So that's an idea. You could also like glue a crate to the front of these or even the back of it too. And like, I don't know, put stuff you don't want to see back there. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a hoarder? Just kidding. All right, you guys. And here's our little mini versions of the Kirkland's pieces. I think they are super cute. I think they will be great in, you know, like bookshelves, a desk. Ooh, bring it to the office, girl. Like that would be super cute too. So 
The next one, I saw this personalized picture, the Winchester family that uh, I thought it was so beautiful. And ooh, this must be huge, you guys, because it's $144.99. So ours definitely is not that big. So this is gonna be a free principle I'm offering. I did design this myself on Canva and you should be able to edit, well, I would hope, the V and <laughs> the last name to make your very own. So you guys, I grabbed this frame and I thought I was gonna do a lot more crafting to this, uh, but I didn't go that way. I thought I was gonna paint it like a green color and it was gonna be all like fancy and stuff, but Anyways, anywho, every time I make these, I always forget that the frame is eight by 10 and the piece of paper is eight and a half by 11. So if you wanna measure this down, go for it. Either way, you're gonna have to cut down the paper, I guess, right? So I am just taking the paper that's in the frame, tracing it out, I'm gonna cut it out, super easy. And I love this image, you guys, that I created because it seriously looks like a watercolor. So I place it in the frame and this is where I'm like, oh, this looks good with the white frame. So I just take the glass out. I'm going to go ahead and clean that, pop it in the frame. And that's it, you guys. Can this even be called a craft? I don't know. I did design the image. So yeah, it's a craft. But this looks so sharp and the image seriously looks like it's a watercolor and this would look even higher end if you did if you printed this on white cardstock versus printer paper but i will leave the canva link down in the description box for you guys i hope you enjoy these kirkland's inspired pieces i hope you have an amazing week and you guys know i will be back here on saturday for some more diys bye all right just changed now we even though my hair color, my hair color, yeah, that's gonna be the same, so <coughs> that ain't changing. <coughs> oh, please. Okay. I can't. Again, have no idea what we're doing for this video. Alright, so I can't paint. We don't even have to mention what we're doing. How about that? Okay. dye my hair again. I think about going darker. Darker. Okay. I wish this was like a slinky. I mean, it. <laughs> no, that one didn't do it. <coughs> All right. Now, let's try not to erase these. <laughs>